This is the first part of a lecture on diversity in fungi and plants for Bio 101 um, from August 28, 2020. And so we've already talked about um, the two domains at the top of the slide, domain archaea and domain bacteria. And today we're going to move into talking about um, some of the kingdoms that fall into domain eukarya or the eukaryotes, the organisms that have nuclei and organelles within their cells. So we first need to talk a little bit about how eukaryotic cells evolved and how um, one cell could acquire this nucleus as well as any other organelles. And so in the beginning, as we discussed, there were bacteria, um, in both archaea and bacteria that are considered prokaryotes. And over time, some of these prokaryotes evolved the ability to turn sun into chemical energy through a process known as photosynthesis. Other prokaryotes evolve the ability to use oxygen to do their metabolic activities, which is something known as aerobic or oxygen requiring. And there is a theory known as endosymbiotic theory or endosymbiosis, that one prokaryote engulfed another prokaryote and they started to live together until they became completely dependent on each other to survive. And this is going to be illustrated in this picture here on the slide. And so you can see sort of a proto-eukaryotic cell or a pre-eukaryote here in this first image. And it's thought that some infoldings or invaginations of the plasma membrane are what gave rise to the nucleus and the endoplasmic reticulum, which is one organelle we'll talk about when we get to the eukaryotic cell. And then in one endosymbiotic event, this sort of pro-eukaryote or this pre-eukaryote cell engulfed one of those special aerobic bacterium or those bacteriums that could use oxygen for their metabolism. And that aerobic bacterium started to provide energy to the pro-eukaryote. And it needed some of the information from the nucleus here to survive. And this pre-eukaryotic cell started to depend on that energy generated by the aerobic bacterium. And so what eventually ended up happening was this aerobic bacterium evolved into what we now know as the mitochondria of the cell, which provides the ATP energy that eukaryotic cells use to do most of their work. And then there may have been a second endosymbiotic event where one of those bacterium or those prokaryotes that could make food out of sunlight was engulfed by the pro-eukaryotic cell or that pre-eukaryotic cell. And it ultimately evolved into a chloroplast, which in a plant cell is where photosynthesis takes place and sugar is made. And so what you can see here at the top is a sort of a modern plant cell or a photosynthetic eukaryotic cell, which has organelles like the ER and the nucleus derived from membranes infolding here. It also has mitochondria from the first endosymbiotic event where this pre-eukaryote took in an aerobic bacteria. And it also has chloroplasts from a second endosymbiotic event where this cell took in a bacteria that could do photosynthesis. And now this cell, as well as these individual, what used to be prokaryotes, depend on each other for survival. So you can no longer take a mitochondria out of a eukaryotic cell and expect it to live on its own. And the same for chloroplasts. They require the rest of the cellular machinery to survive. And this cell as a whole would not be able to survive without a chloroplast to make food, and a mitochondria to provide energy. And then down here you can see in modern what would be kind of considered an animal cell or a heterotrophic eukaryote that has once again that nuclei and endoplasmic reticulum from this first event of infolding of the plasma membrane on the outside. And then <laughs> mitochondria um, from that endosymbiotic event where this pre-eukaryote consumed an aerobic bacteria. And once again, 
these cells would not be able to live without the mitochondria within them, and the mitochondria would not be able to survive without the rest of the cell.